What's going on everybody? It's Dmitry from FlexRC and today we are going to look with you at the uh, latest camera from Cadex, Cadex Tercier. So Cadex Tercier is a dual uh, FPV camera with uh, embedded 4K DVR and uh, let's open it up and see what is in the box. It's supposed to be 18 gram light and uh, we are going to double check if it is indeed uh, this kind of weight. So you see it comes with uh, a Wi-Fi module installed on the top. Uh, here goes SD card. This is the cable. Oh, <laughs> it's not screwed in. All right, so we'll have to use uh, some kind of uh, hardware to install it and you can see there are two lenses lens for DVR has 2.8 aperture and it's supposed uh, to have anti-shaking uh, mechanism I'm not really sure what it means they say it's hardware perhaps it's optical uh, stabilization or programmatic stabilization they implemented what else is in the box uh, so we see here has a uh, remote control with some wires, uh, some spacers and a few screws. I assume it's uh, to put it together as well as uh, data transmission cable uh, for TRS here. Uh, my assumption is that this cable can be used instead of uh, the one which comes with it, although uh, the length seems very similar, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use it right away. So let's put it aside for now. And uh, what else I have? I have a uh, Tarsier ND8 filter, which I think supposed to reduce uh, brightness by three stops. So ND filter goes like that. Oh, and it stays on the camera. Nice, it should also protect camera in case of the crash, so it will save the lens. Uh, let's uh, put it on the scales and see. So in the weight of uh, the camera with uh, the filter is 17.7 uh, and with this uh, metal piece it is 20 gram and without filter is 19.5 uh, and without this metal piece it is 17 gram. So my current plan is uh, to use uh, my latest uh, frame uh, Ninja uh, with uh, this camera. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the camera is supposed to fit uh, really nicely over here. So you can see it's over here like that. It fits just nice. And uh, then I'm going to use HDLRC Zeus here it is. So I'm going to use uh, this all-in-one uh, piece of electronics. Uh, what I like about it, it's very reliable. I've been using it uh, uh, on many of my builds. It never failed. Uh, one of weak points here is a USB, but you can break it sometimes, but uh, it doesn't happen too often. So uh, this piece will go on top of it. Then it will go inside of the frame something like that and then uh, we are going uh, to use uh, some kind of uh, video transmitter so i finished with the first step uh, i've installed uh, zeus uh, all-in-one flight controller speed controller to the base plate i also installed motors and soldered them uh, to the speed controller as you can see here uh, i'm going to wrap these wires uh, around the uh, screws and then I'm going uh, to install uh, this Cadex Tarsier uh, just by sliding on top of these uh, uh, sc long screws I've got and uh, soldering all the necessary wires. Another step is done. Uh, this time I installed Tarsier on top of the flight controller. Uh, as you can see, it's all nicely uh, sits on top of each other. I used uh, three millimeters tall standoffs 
over here you can see them uh, for that uh, on top i used uh, five millimeter standoffs but i cut uh, the bottom piece a little bit uh, in order to reduce the height uh, so as a next step i'm going uh, to install a video transmitter on top of it and uh, solder it uh, here at the back everything is very simple uh, not too much soldering going on here as you can see uh, the tarsier is connected uh, just uh, over here I installed all the electronics, I'm super excited about it. The height of the stack is just under 20 millimeters, so it should fit nicely under our canopy. I opted to use full speed FSD 600 video transmitter. Uh, the beauty of this video transmitter is that it supports from 25 up to 600 milliwatts uh, power, uh, and it should be a nice choice for the long range model, which I'm hoping uh, to achieve with this one and uh, it also has speed mod and by default I think it comes locked so we are going to try to unlock it so it will allow us to change uh, frequency and uh, next one I'm using is uh, full speed FR Sky receiver uh, which I'm looking forward to test the range of it I hope uh, it will complement this VTX and yeah, everything uh, really fits together nicely. Uh, everything uses plugs, uh, which is really cool. Uh, this VTX can be easily replaced in case anything will break uh, without any soldering. So it should be a nice infield repairability. And uh, even uh, Cadex uh, Tarsier is using the plug, which is also super cool. So it means I can really disassemble and replace everything without any issues. Uh, only things that which don't use plug are motors in this case, but it's all right. I know that uh, Zeus uh, flight controller, speed controller board is very reliable from my previous experience. So yeah, uh, next step will be to install our cage. Uh, connected to the computer and make required software set up and then we can take it for a flight. I've been flying Ninja with Tarsir for a few weeks right now and it wasn't as a smooth experience as I expected and I'm going to cover the issues a little bit later but before that I just want to show you uh, the fitting of components. It is definitely a tight fit uh, but it worked uh, nicely with three millimeter tall standoffs I even uh, removed screws here from the canopy in order to let you see it uh, yeah, better. So on top I've got a receiver, then I have uh, VTX from full speed. Uh, quite nice uh, VTX, I must say. Uh, very good uh, quality of the feed. Underneath I've got uh, Tarsier uh, main boards and heat sink. Uh, the heat sink is the main offender which consumes uh, quite a bit of space. I think it's actually possible to build without it. I've heard from some people that uh, they had uh, a lot of success uh, running it without uh, this heat sink. And then I have a flight controller, speed controller board from HDLRC. In terms of flight characteristics, uh, you will see in the video it was flying quite nicely. Although I have uh, to warn you about uh, issues that Tarsier currently has. Unfortunately, a uh, regular uh, format of SD card won't work with the Tarsier. And I had to reformat it through their app in order for SD card to work. And it works fine. I can then connect it to computer and download all the files. Although I cannot use the same SD card after that with Cadex Turtle, which is kind of weird. I don't know really what's going on there, but I just thought it will worth to know because when I started, I basically ejected SD card from my Cadex Turtle and inserted it into Tarsier with the hope it will work. But then to my surprise, it didn't record anything uh, just for me to find out a little bit later through experimentation that I had to format it through their app in order for it to work. Other issue, it's not really an issue, but uh, kind of the expectation is uh, or requirement is that you have to use their app in order to change vital settings uh, which are uh, required uh, for you 
uh, in order to make it actually work as expected. So I found this issue, you know, after installation, I started to fly and noticed a horrible jello in my video, uh, which was kind of weird because I usually fly the same kind of setup with uh, Cadex Turtle and I don't have this kind of issue. So then I switched uh, props one to another. I used all the components essentially new. I retightened everything and it didn't help at all. So then I kind of got really upset. I even went to Facebook group and tried to ask uh, people's experience. And I've heard that actually other people also have issues with uh, stability of their footage. So then I thought, wait a second, something is wrong here. And I went into the settings in order to play with them and see if different settings will make any difference. So my first success was when I scaled it down to 1440 uh, resolution and it started suddenly to look much better on the video. Uh, then I played with the settings even more and I was able to get it working with uh, 2K nicely. So after analyzing a video and looking uh, at the behavior, I actually came to the conclusion that the issue with this camera isn't it that it cannot handle vibrations well, which I thought at first, but it is actually, I think, uh, either software issue or hardware issue that it cannot really handle 4K footage that it's trying to record. It simply looks like it is lacking some FPS so you get a, an impression that it is jello when it actually isn't simply because it's skipping frames and then you get this kind of really weird uh, looking picture so in my case i was able to achieve best results with uh, encoding h295 and 2k 60 frames per second and I almost forgot to mention that another critical issue with it is that it's not really finalizing recording after you will land. So in case you will forget to hit uh, the stop uh, record button, which is located over here, you will most likely lose your footage. It was kind of randomly recording it, but in most cases it wasn't. So the way I worked around it, I set it to record one minute clips so then I'm just uh, flying for three minutes, for example, I will definitely get at least two clips and then trying to remember to hit the button after I will land. Although everything not as dark as it sounds, you're still getting really decent footage with 2K. And then I must note that FPV feed is very nice. I really loved it. I think it behaves so nice against the sun in the darkness. The picture is really good. I didn't try to measure the latency just because of the amount of time I had to spend with this product to get it to work. And I kind of got a bit demotivated, honestly. Uh, but with all that, it looks like an eye candy in the goggles and it's a really enjoyable experience. With all that, let's look at my final FPV video and I hope you will uh, enjoy it. And uh, I must say, for the price, it's uh, probably not too bad. Although, I guess if you don't want to have headache, I will uh, go with uh, Cadex Turtle as it is a safe choice at this point. But even with that, honestly, if you don't mind spending 20 extra bucks and uh, playing a little bit with the settings, you should still be able to get uh, fairly decent 2K footage, which is obviously far away from GoPro quality, uh, but you still get what you pay for.
Okay, I hope you had a lot of fun watching my video and you find it useful for yourself. Uh, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions. I will also have links uh, in the description of this video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying my videos. It uh, really helps me to produce uh, more videos for you. And see you later.